human instincts. We still have them, you know. It's just these days we don't use them as much. But really, we need to. So if you don't know what our instincts are, our instincts are our senses in survival mode. And every day really is a survival. Just because we live with comfortable lives and whatnot doesn't mean the next day you're going to get robbed and shot. Or perhaps eaten by a mountain lion. Yeah. Some people still have their instincts completely intact. Those who were in the military, for example, went to war. Straight up freaking war. Okay? Causes PTSD, all kinds of other trauma, and God knows what else. Really. But when you're on the battlefield, every single one of your instincts kick in. And yes, we have a what is known as a lost sixth sense, and I'll explain that after I explain every aspect with our instincts that come from the survival uh, uh, the, the kick of survival from our senses okay so military alright of course their fucking shit's gonna go crazy alright now also people who are or were on the streets for a long period of time. In other words, long a little longer than five years. And I've been there. And I'm only going to talk about a tiny bit of that because that shit was a night. It was a night. It was a nightmare from fucking hell. But I will talk about it, for example. Nothing else. One of the only things I'll never be open about is my own mistake. I don't think any of us who survive them damn streets really want to go back on there. That shit sucks. So. Oh. Our senses. Oh, yes. And as well as people who don't um, feel like they're entitled to everything. Yeah, Karen, Kevin, use your senses, damn it. And the sixth sense is not common sense. That common sense is more of a metaphorical saying of common knowledge. So that's a completely different thing. That will not be the sixth sense. So let's go with the first sense. Sight. To see. Now, what are a lot of the aspects of that? Actually, the whole thing, the whole fragment of thing of sight. What can you do with your sight and your instinct when your survival kicks? When, when it means for it. You're lost in the desert or something and it's super dark. Let's start there. Or perhaps in the woods or somewhere by uh, the, the fucking forest or something like that. Okay? And it's super dark. Super, super dark. Sure, there's a little moonlight, but a lot of the trees, bushes and whatnot are kind of in the way of the moonlight. Which really sucks. And it's kind of hard to find a path like that. Because that's all you really need is a path. Once you find the path, you're good. <clears throat> Now, night time. Do we have night vision? Yes and no. We have our own special type of night vision. It ain't like what what coyotes and fucking uh, mountain lions or what not have where they can actually see because they're nocturnal mammals. We are both day and night time. Okay. We're a day and night type of mammal, or type of mammal. And for some people, yeah, I, I get it why you like to stay up in the middle of the night. I mean, I catch up on my video games and whatnot. 
But daytime, we, we stay up for a good amount of time, but it's normal to take some naps. In fact, it's actually very healthy, but it's not what we're on. I was getting off the track. So, this is what is going on here, all right? So, you're lost. It's super dark. How do you see in the dark? You see, this even happens when you turn off all your lights in the house. You give your eyes some time, little, little flicky flicky here and there, you know? Just start getting old, just, just kind of do this with your eyes, like so. And, you know, and just kind of wire them up like this and put them back to normal, and, you know, like that. Uh, you see? And then look at the ground and look up side to side and your sight would start adjusting to everything within the dark and you will be able to see at least shapes and if there's white you'll be able to see white and dark you're able to see fades of light color uh, light red light pink pink white uh, even black even helps for example uh, 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 you have a, a, a black painted door or something in your house. Okay, that black, black painted door <coughs> is uh, is really black. Like you, you make sure it's blacker than black. So that way, when you turn off all your lights, you can see. Oh, that's the door. It's darker than the dark. The reason being is because you still got a little bit of light even though all your curtains are out. Some of that light can still kind of go through those, cur those curtains and blinds and whatnot. And as well as some other faded lights in your house, your microwave, your coffee maker, your alarm, stuff like that will give a slight simple of color. Which, yes, will also help you see, but it's still going to be pretty freaking dark. So, therefore, have something dark, right? Something between a really dark color of black or a really dark color of blue or anything of a light color. So, that way, it'll help. But, what about, again, when you're lost in the woods? Shapes. Forest, you can see trees and all that. Ooh, but still, gotta be creepy, huh? Some of them, some of them branches and vines and stuff like that in forests would look like snakes. But if you really look without fear, more like, okay, I can't say without fear because I'd be shit fucking pantsing all over the place, man. I don't know, no joke. I'll be fucking pissing and shit and puke flying all over the place because if I was scared, I'd be on that part thing is, is with forest, that shit's pretty fucking scary, man. So again, you look at the ground first, and start looking up side to side, especially up. You always want to look up, especially with your instincts. If you just keep looking down like this, you're not going to be able to see a goddamn thing with your peripheral vision, which we'll go into next. And... Also, you know, you can't really see anything. So, you want to go, go like this real quick, blink the lines a couple of times, and there you go. Okay, that's not a snake. That's a vine. Oh, that plant ain't no more fucking weird looking monster. It's a fucking plant. Okay, cool. Let's go. That's a tree. That's that. That's that. Be able to still kind of look at the ground, but, you know, just kind of scan it everything that's what our instinct at nighttime is it's scanning okay it's not really just looking for familiar spots or anything because when you're lost you're probably not going to be seeing too many things real familiar at first until you get back onto that trail you see and once you get back onto that trail, because there's a trail and you've seen this trail before, there's everything that you can finally see familiar. But look at rocks. 
Look at water, especially. Water, best friend ever at nighttime. Everything reflects off, 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 off of it. Even the slightest amount of light. And a lot of things make noise into it as well. So, yeah. All kinds of your senses, senses with that just makes you happy. Follow the water. If you don't know which way that is, it'll send you to some type of trail, to some type of civilization, to get some type of help. You see? That's the result after that. Now, here's another example. We're going to go into a peripheral vision now. Peripheral vision. What is a peripheral vision? Now, it's kind of hard for me to define. Only because I've always used it. Ever since I learned what it is. But peripheral vision is things that we can see pretty much right here. And this is how many angles we can see. Yeah, sure. An owl can go fucking basically fucking 360 degrees. Almost. Actually, I think it goes halfway. I forgot. I think it goes halfway. Anyways. Our eyes. Can do that too. Our eyes can go so far. Okay. They can, they can go so far. And using your peripheral vision. There's different peripheral visions. Okay. There is directional peripheral. Directional peripheral. That's where you see at the angles and whatnot. And then there is uh, sight. A peripheral. Sight a peripheral is pretty much where it's in a direction, but it's in one direction. And depending you keep on looking at it just like this. This is why people are able to stand still just like that. And yeah, sometimes you gotta turn your head, and that's by instinct as well. But if you don't, you can get pretty good at it. Oh, there's danger. Oh, danger. Oh, yes, a peripheral vision goes up, it goes down, it goes everywhere okay ah fuck I think I almost gave my eyeballs an aneurysm or something oh fuck okay they can go upwards of course that in other words boom Boom, 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 boom. This is upwards. Not like an owl where it can go side to back, side to back. Ours is side and front. That's it. Side to side, front. Unfortunately, the way we got to go back is like that. So, and if any of you saw something there, that's because I caught myself on fire. Not talking about that. Okay. Uh, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Another aspect of sight is focus. Yes, focus is a sight instinct, not just a big brain that that focus for the brain is focus for knowledge focus for sight yes it involves a brain but you're collecting data of what you're trying to comprehend and yeah but the thing is is that with that that's why some people go like this if they cause sometimes we start losing our sight or it becomes weaker. So therefore we gotta squint like that. And therefore we can finally comprehend a slight better of an image 
Because doing that, it doesn't really zoom anything in. It just makes all the blurry sidelines kind of gone. And you can get more of an idea of doing that. And then putting it back to normal. I mean, like, my, my vision is horrid. I could see from here to there, like, where th this phone is. But I, I really can't see much. It's from the neighbor's lights and whatnot like that. Their lights don't look like lights. Their lights look like a bunch of just blurry as brightness clumped together. Uh, but that is because, and no, I used to have, um, I used to be nearsighted. Something happened to my eye. So therefore, I got astigmatism, but I still try to keep my instincts intact. You can still do that. Eh, I mean, with glasses, it's better. Trust me. Now, a huge thing with eyesight as well, other than focusing and whatnot like that, we can as well as adjust. Just like we can adjust to darkness, we can adjust our eyesight in the sunlight. I mean, me, I'm a little bitch when it comes down to it. That's probably the only instinct part of the eyesight I don't use. I keep using my dark ass sunglasses. But if you got light eyes like mine, you know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't matter whose eyes. The fucking sun's bright as fuck no matter what. But the thing is is that if you don't wear sunglasses in the daytime and whatnot like that, well, it's, it'll take some time, but you'll be able to adjust, your eyes will be able to adjust and it'll feel a lot better. I fucking hate it. It burns, it hurts, it hurts, and it feels like my eyes are about to fucking pulsate out of my socket. Like, just like, boop, 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 beep, type of shit, you know? Like, it hurts. A lot. And the thing is, is that I got tired of putting my head down like this just because the sun hurts. And I'm like, okay, it's time. And this helps out a lot. <clears throat> I swear I just saw my joint roller too. Damn it. So, anyway, now let's move on to the next instinct. Hearing. Our hearing is pretty acute, ain't it? Our hearing as well as helps us. Let's go with that one first. First things first. Hearing helps us detect presence. It's not just really just our brain. Our brain detects a little, little bit, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. So let's say you got a fan on, alright? You're barely waking up, and I'm not talking about sleep paralysis. Your friend, your mom, your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband or whatever comes in, your fan's on, remember this, and you're you're barely awake and you could hear the the fan perfectly fine and then suddenly you hear it be a little bit muffled out and then you hear footsteps in your carpet perhaps that the footsteps isn't just the first part of the presence it's also their clothes you hear everything Okay, if you definitely hear every, everything from when people, even if they wear flip 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 flops, and you hear their freaking pants, and you hear their their shirt with their arms, you know, like how we move our arms and stuff, and you know our shirts here slide against right here, and all that that type of shit, or or uh uh um. You know, shit like that. You know, it's... You're going to hear all that. Is, 
You see, you can even hear the faintest little things if you just listen. If you just let yourself listen, just take a deep breath. Humans can hear from 13 to 100 miles away. It used to be a big belief that it was 10 to 100 feet. Until a real experiment on it, a long ass time ago, was tested onto it. A hundred miles. Now, these days, it's really hard to hear all that that far. There's too much other noise interfering with that. Honestly, I kind of think that fact needs to be rejected. Only because it's like... I can probably only hear about 25 miles away. That's at the 29 Palms military base. That is because they have uh, test a lot with bombs, not nuclear bombs. Don't worry. Duh, regular old like hand grenades, fucking tanks, uh, uh, bazookas. Uh, uh, RPGs and even sometimes if you hear really 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 close you'll hear their practice shots as well like uh, I've only uh, oh, like the loudest I swear it's uh it's uh I swear it's a fucking shotgun that they're using or somebody there is using but that's really the one I hear <laughs> Sounds like one of those fucking uh, things you gotta fucking put the big boy into. Like those, those, those fucking shells that are like that big. Um, anyways. Hearing was the biggest thing. Especially for hunting back in the day. Or... When we needed to protect ourselves and hide away from a predator such as a saber-toothed tiger. Or, uh, or, uh, uh, get away from a bunch of mam mammoths and shit like that if, they're, if you're not gonna hunt it down. That type of shit. That's what our instincts for that was really used for. These days, it just really evolved. Believe it or not, although for how far we could hear things... We couldn't hear things through things for the longest time. It wasn't until, oh, shoot, until humanity came up with, it wasn't until the Chinese, uh, the, god damn it, it starts with the Z, it was the Zio or the, not a Z, it starts with the X, Zio or the Zio, I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know how the Chinese do it, but it was a dynasty back in the day. Alright, this dynasty, fucking, they were the ones who discovered, like, oh, oh, wow, because they recorded that their ancestors weren't able to do that. And you gotta remember, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Chinese philosophers, philosophers, and scientists back in the day, oh, they weren't called scientists though, but a lot of them who studied a lot of things, they they were interested in things like this because their grandparents and shit like that told them like, you know, we couldn't do this and we couldn't do this, and they're like, what if we can do it now? Huh, we can. Hearing, being able to hear through things. Actually, in fact, before that, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, that part is in the history books. But the part that needs to be added to them, one of those things that needs to be still updated to it, is that the Egyptians were, in fact, the first ones to come up with that. Long as time ago. And... This is the greatest part about it. With hearing, especially through things, these days, like, 
without the glass, without, it's like, it's just your ear to the wall, you can hear some things. You can hear a lot of things. You can hear the water run. Although, there's, like, well, some people still, for some reason, still got pipe in their walls for some reason. I got them all underneath. But, uh, uh, what was I going to say? But you can still hear vibrations from the water. That's what it's just from the water if you have something like that. But you'd still be able to hear it if you do have a pipeline into your wall. You can hear a lot of vibrations coming from traffic if you're kind of close to uh, the uh, road you live by, like possibly boom. In fact, in fact, stuff like that actually help detect how uh, real uh, railroad or uh, train robbers rob trains. They didn't even know when this train's gonna come, so so they stand in like a spot or two, and every thirty seconds or more, it was more like 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 every few minutes they go ahead and put their ear. And as well as, oh, actually, they keep they keep their hands on the ground only because the hands would disturb the vi vibration, and just barely put the ear to the to the to the rail. And you can see, hear, and as well for some reason on your like right here, you be able to feel it. So. Yeah, and that's another one we're getting into now. Feel. It's crazy how we got all this. You know what's even crazier? I feel this. This is a burn. And no, it's not infected. I mean, fortunately, these fresh blisters and I got to keep putting A and D ointment after I wash it off with soap and water. Making sure it doesn't get infected. I thought it was for a second, but this morning it was just dry. So I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta put, oh yeah, let's try to put this stuff on there. Had to wash off because, you know, there's germs in your bed and whatnot. So I don't wanna get infected just by sleeping most of the time and going all over the place. But at least six times a day, you gotta wash this. Take some Norco. And some ibuprofen, been hesitant on the Norco, but I take it when I really need to. It's just, I don't like that stuff, it makes me feel weird. Ibuprofen is something I really rely on because, well, I smoke weed. So imagine smoking that with Norco. <laughs> yeah. I need to smoke more weed. So, anyways. Um, our feel. Touch. Okay. There's a difference between feeling and touching. Feeling is when someone or something else touches you. While touching is when you touch, like, I'm touching this toothpick. I'm... Touching the Sharpie. Touching my face. Okay. I can feel this pain. That's another type of feel. Pain. Let's go with that first. Pain. Pain is crazy, ain't it? And before anybody goes on with it, I... We'll go into it later, but yeah, I believe that this simulation is some type of matrix. And I'm just saying some crazy tech shit type of sis simulation. Anyways, back to it. Okay, feeling. Right, the pain. 
right here. All right, what I feel right now, because most because of weed and the ibuprofen, like I said, I don't take the, the, the Norco very much. But this year, I can still kind of feel it when I do this. And it feels like my skin is getting stretched and on fire at the same time. Believe it or not, burns still radiate heat days after uh, it caught on fire. Yes, I literally got caught on fire. Not really going to get into it. But after it gets caught on fire. Oh, you can feel it radiating heat. You can feel that it's a completely different heat signature just by feeling it. Like, this is way hotter. And it's been since, I believe, yeah, Tuesday. So it's been two days. Another thing that still hurts in what I can feel is when I move my fingers. And it hurts even worse when I do that. Why do I keep doing this? It's because I gotta feel, you know? And to feel, I, I, it can help me show you an example. Because you can't feel what I'm feeling and I can't feel what you're feeling. Okay? Now, there is another type of instinct that goes with feeling. Now we have these different types of chemicals in our brains. And it comes from one other chemical that mixes up with those chemicals, pumps through your heart, and therefore, voila, you have what is known as an emotion. You feel an emotion. Okay, emotions are a real thing. You feel it. Not just like, uh, you feel anger, you feel, you feel sadness, you feel happiness, you know. And other people don't feel what you feel in that aspect either. But, however, even with pain, even with emotion, and as well as, you know, Feeling a story you're writing or something like that. And. Boom. You know, I'm stoned as fuck, so hold on. Getting to my point here in a minute with feeling. Feeling. Is triggered mostly by the nervous system. That triggers a response to your brain. And it triggers either an outrage, depending on the situation. These days it seems like everything's an hour and hour and outrage to most people. Like, fuck. Anyways, it triggers happiness, it triggers joy, it triggers fun, like a feeling of joy, feeling of enjoyment. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Trigger it, 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 all these emotions, you know, and even when people get and yeah, we we can get even mixed emotions all at once too. Sympathization is another feeling. It's a type of emotion where a human or even an animal, an animal in the animal king, king the kingdom, you know. Let's just, but let's just go with a human. Okay, I mean, if you got feelings, of course, then you would know what I'm talking about. Sympathization. To have sympathy. To sympathize with the person's feeling that you don't feel, but you know what, you, what they're going through. Or you see what they're going through, and you're not exactly sure, but fuck it, you're going to help them. And then you start feeling it after that, like, oh, now I know. And then you really go into what is known as deep sympathization. Okay. Uh, that is a type of emotion that actually helps most of us humans, if you're human, of course, to 
work together without fucking communism, you know? But that's besides the point. Back to it, okay? Actually, that was the point, not com not 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 the part of anti-communism. Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. More of the part, deep sympathization. It's what it comes down to. With feeling, it comes down to the nervous system, the pain. You feel sweat. You feel wetness when when a uh, uh, colder or warm water is poured on you. You feel hot when fire is burning or when um, hot water is poured on to you. You feel uh, basically it comes down to nerves, to, to feeling things. Tap it on things that can feel it with your fingertips. Some people, believe it or not, are sometimes born without not having their fingertips. Uh, I mean, not having their. Not, uh, so baked right now. They don't. You know. They don't feel shit in their fingertips. None of them. Even their thumb. Although it's not a finger. You know. I guess nature counts as that. But. You know. And some people. Accidentally burn it off. Or something like that. You know. And there they go. Forever gone. Just those fucking nerves. <laughs> but yeah. But you feel this. If you do that. You can feel that. Uh, you can feel clapping during the, the, the response. This could be a sarcastic response. Sarcasm is expressed from few different emotions, um, uh, depending on the situation. Somebody being completely either redundant or simpleton-like. And you're just like, ha oh, ha, you dumbass. Or another sarcastic thing where somebody says something offensive or just pure gibberish and just go like, bravo, bravo. Okay. Or there's a great performance or you're watching something on TV and it was fucking great. Encore, encore, encore. Okay. You're feeling at that point. You're feeling like excitement. You're feeling excitement, rejoicement, and as well as uh, uh, it's an emotion that's way more than happiness. Uh, uh, it's like super happiness. I forgot what the word is called, but basically, you feel super happy about it, and you can't wait for the next episode or sequel of a movie. <clears throat> or the next act on the play, or something like that. Like, that was great. That was fantastical. Fuck yeah. Woo! Perfect. Stop of shit. Now. Now. Uh. Yeah, I guess what might be. Next thing. I don't know, feel. Now we're going on touch. Touch has evolved as well. Believe it or not. Our touch used to be a, a lot more grip grippier when we first evolved. However, the thing is, is that we stopped running and chasing for food and we started this thing called um, marketing and I don't mean today's marketing 
This was also known back in the day as bargain markets. Um, where you would trade like sheep and shit like that for, I don't know. Yeah, I might have to re-roll a joint, damn it. Re-roll a joint. Anyways. Our touch has completely evolved over time. We used to be a lot more sensitive. Because two things, as I said, running, and we didn't have these at all at that time. These didn't come in for a long time. We had a lot of things like it, sure, but most of the time, chasing animals. That was the thing to do until we collected cattle, made bargain markets, and other things. And therefore, that kind of made us a little lazy. So our body said, okay, I want to make your touch a little less sensitive. We can still able to feel pretty good. We can feel this, right? We can feel this when we throw something into our hands like so. We can feel pain when we touch, you know, a wound or perhaps touching. It's also become a big old thing. Because what evolution has taught us now is to grip things better. So therefore, because a lot of times, a lot of people say, oh, our evolution is going to be where? It's going to be like this. It was already like that. After our feet became, were, were hands, and it became the feet we see now, that's when this happened. The reason being is because of tree climbing. Gripping the tree and all that shit. Yeah, we had a super grip, but now we've got an even better grip. Something like this, we wouldn't even be able to hang on to much longer, much longer. And climb with on top of a tree. Or the first type of fucking thing of ladders that we used to make, which were just a bunch of logs and fibers from plants. Yeah, well, they made those things way back in the day when we were just nothing but hunters and, ga and gatherers. You see, hunters and gatherers wasn't over uh, until we started to evolve with knowledge. More knowledge. We big again to say, oh, you know what? Maybe with this bargaining system, we can make a trading system. Therefore, they get more cattle, more everything. Sure, the bargains were pretty good, but a lot of bargains were either you get what you get or uh, you get hassled until you get what you want. Or until they get what they want type of shit. With trading, you get it as is, and... You'll leave it at that. Because you traded for it. And, but it was around that time when we began to grip a lot of things. Also around this time, we had sharper canine than we do now. Yes, we had canine teeth. Well, they were more of just kind of sharp fangs. For meat... Yeah, sure. When we could digest it, eating it raw. But we mostly used it for a lot of other things. Evolution said, oh, you're crafting a lot of things? Oh, you're eating a lot more veggies than you are meat and fruit than you are ve than you are veggies. Okay. You're going to need some sharp teeth for that. And they were pretty sharp and a little big. Not like 
ah, like that type of shit. No, they are about this size right here. And they're still kind of sharp to this day. However, the thing is, they're just a little bit dull now. The reason being is because we stopped crafting and cutting things like this. This is how we used to cut a lot of coconuts, other fruits, vegetables, to craft things. Okay? That's why evolution did it, and it became also... Uh, the second strongest set of teeth, and yes, they were also on the bottom too. If you look in the mirror at some point, you'll be able to really see it. Like, whoa, that's cool. And some people's are pretty darn sharp, and others aren't. Either because it got chipped, or it just would it didn't come out like that. Sometimes enamel just overloads itself. Anyways. So, I forgot where I was at. But, anyways, because of that, we were being able to grip that type of shit. We were able to grip a coconut. These days, if you really put a lot into it, you can crush a coconut with your bare hands. We could not do that at that time. We can go ahead and tear it apart with our teeth. But getting this big giant grip and being able to crush it, crushing a cantaloupe, an apple, for some reason, can't crush an egg or even a kiwi like that. Weird, huh? Unless you put it in that right spot, you can do it. Human strength is pretty incredible. You just have to utilize it a little bit more. You know? And again, you'll be able to feel it. But, you know, without touching, we wouldn't be able to have all these cool things. All these cool fucking things. Or being able to warn, you know? We wouldn't be able to feel how this bag is made. We can see it, but because... We wouldn't be able to feel it. It's like, ah, oh, damn. I don't know if the texture is good or not. I don't know if it's going to fall apart so fast. I don't know if it's durable enough. That's why everything is not solid, but solid enough to hold everything. Yeah, that's also because everybody's cheap, too. Um, now, that was... Okay, that's four. Now, we're going on to our fifth sense. Sense. And our fifth sense kind of... Oh, yes, that's right. Oh. Uh, right. Uh, sight. Hearing. Touch. Well, touch and feel kind of go in the same category. But... In a way, they are different. They kind of go in the same category. Since, you know, you can be touched by somebody's hand getting to your face because you just got slapped. You felt that. You see? So, that makes that now working on the fifth sense. Smell. Our smell really isn't that good, believe it or not. Uh, it's unlike our other senses, it's good enough if there's a strong scent. And that still doesn't go very far. You kind of, you kind of, when, when did you smell something? That's pretty much where, wherever you could detect it. But it goes pretty far. Oh, uh, it goes, uh. They said uh, something like, like way less than a mile type of stuff. It's more than a thousand miles. 
way less than a mile, which a mile is a lot of feet. If you look it up, you'll see what I mean. Um, but we can see at a thousand feet. Or, uh, let's see. Smell at a thousand feet at max. Uh, the closer you are, let's say about 200 yards to, uh, let's see, oof. let's say it, no, let's say it this, uh, 200 yards, 250 yards, you'll be able to smell it pretty good, and at less than that, you'll be able to really smell it, or stinky, or good, but the thing is, is that we need that. Um, a lot of times, you can smell the wild. Quite literally, plants, animals such as small prey, like uh, rabbits, uh, bobcat, shit like that. You know, small little prey. Um, then a little bit of bigger prey, like moose. Even sometimes, yes, a lot of, a lot of hunters ate bear, boar, and as well as other things. They harvested a lot of plants. Seeds is the biggest thing that they ever did. But, fact here is, getting off track again. Uh, with the smelling, we were able to detect a lot of things. And when we know something is poisonous or not, and like we have a journal and it says like, you know, instructions say smell it, and it smells like this, it's bad, it's, if it doesn't, it's good, you know, and you're able to just, uh, uh, or smelling the roses, you know. Our scent is something that we really need to, to have, you know. It's, it's something so that we can, oh, I don't know how to say this, in a survival sense. If you smell a mixture of burnt rubber and fire, wood fire, mixed together, that is described as the smell of danger. The smell of fear is described to smell almost like a salty acid. Yes, we can smell our own emotions. It's a way to tell us this is how we feel and we need to calm down. Sometimes we don't even know what to say until we finally calm down. Um, another sense for it is infections. And say you got a nice juicy infected scab and you don't know it until you smell it. And some infected uh, cuts, gashes, burns and stuff like that, if it's not treated very well at all, it will be infected. And after a while, it'll turn green. Sure, it's you. It might not be a big thing. Maybe wipe up some of that. But if you smell uh, this type of smell, it smells as if it were death. What you're smelling is a mixture of dead skin, bacteria, and antibodies all mixed up together. And it's a pretty nasty smell. It is described as like smelling as if your wound is death. And if you haven't smelled what a dead body smells like, there's a reason why they put so much scented shit at funerals. Sorry, I don't mean to disrespect the, the, the dead at all. I respect it. It just the fact that when you go close, if you've been to a funeral before, 
you can still smell that odor. That odor isn't just from the body. That odor is from, is mixing up with your emotions. Even if you don't feel any, it's because you're processing. And once you start feeling it and you go back up to it, you start smelling it. It'll smell like a combination of chalk, dead fish, and vomit. Mainly, well, that vomit smell, that acidic, nasty vomit smell, is actually the bile. Uh, let's not get into the rest of that. That was just an example. Okay, our senses of our smell can also trigger there's danger, there's fear, there's death. Even blood has its own smell. Mainly metallic because it has iron in it, copper, and other things. It's kind of why it's actually red, believe it or not. And don't go with the whole thing, oh, our blood is actually blue. Go fact check yourself, man. Get out of here with that fucking unknowledgeable shit. You see? The thing is, with that, our smell also comes with another thing that's kind of intertwined with it. Our taste. I've heard of the saying, it smells just like it tastes, or it tastes just as it smells. Either of those two, and sometimes it tastes different than, it's, than what it smells, or it smells different than what it tastes. That is because that it, uh, it has a, uh, uh, it has, um, the sense itself, how it's connected with your smell, that's what I'm trying to get to the point of, with your smell is, that, uh, let's say this, it's your nerves, again, and it also kind of goes a little bit with feeling, because you can feel the food, or drink, or whatever's going into your mouth, and all that D, whatever, and all, but it's just, you know, whatever's going to go in your mouth, you're going to taste it. And at the same time, you're also going to smell it. So that's why they kind of go together. That's why that's why they have two categories of pretty much everything. I kind of, the eyesight the kind of goes with your hearing. Well, your taste kind of goes with your nose. What about your sixth and seventh sense? Yes, sixth and seventh. I just said it. So I said before, the sixth sense, echolocation. A lot of people tried this experiment over and over and over and over for decades. But either people didn't take it very seriously. Uh, shit was done wrong completely, completely. Or, um, people just got completely distracted and didn't do it. But one day, a person did it by himself. This dude is an Italian man. He went into a cave, just like the experiment was before. And echolocation is just like how bats use it. They have this type of little pitch type sound. Little type of sound 
and it kind of it's kind of echoes like a sonar and it can detect bugs and prey in front of it or a predator might be coming and it needs to escape you got to remember these guys are blind now with caves, we wanted to know, are there any predators in it? Is there any prey so we may eat at the same time of getting shelter? How deep is this cave? How many rocks are there? Is there any obstacles? Is it going to cave in? All that was enabled by echolocation. Ah, right into a cave. The reason why you can't do it in things like this is because while well, there's too many things in here, it has too much, it's not, it's, it's too dense for it. But something like a cave, you know, yeah, sure, you could hear your echo of that, ah, but what you want to hear, because you're hearing, and... You're using this echolocation. You're using your sixth sense. Your fucking voice. Oh, nobody ever thought of that, huh? Although we do it every fucking day. Our sixth sense is the voice. Echolocation. Communication. Verbal communication. If that no more. Ooh, that, ooh, that, that. Ah! type of shit, okay? I mean, we still kind of do that, but when the emotion arises for it. But imagine that all the time for a casual conversation. Uh, but now, here we are. We can use it. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. Our seventh sense. What is our seventh sense? We use it every day. Some people don't use it at all. In fact, we call them simpletons. We use it to read. We use it to figure out things to go out into space. Figure out quantum mechanics. We even used it in the ancient times. If you still don't know what we're not talking about, damn, you don't know how to use your brain. Knowledge, people. Knowledge. Our brain ain't our, our seventh sense. It's our knowledge, that is. It's a high, very high instinct to have. That's what a sense is. An instinct. Instinct to see. Instinct to hear. Instinct to smell. Instinct to taste. Instinct to speak. Instinct to think. Oh, 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 but a lot of people don't think about that. There's a lot when it comes down to it, but those are the reason why we're like the smartest things, especially with our seventh sense, our knowledge. Yeah, sure, dolphins prove to be pretty much next in line to human with the humans and so do other animals but still we're still on the top right there we're pretty smart but we don't use it and if we do it's either to weaponize something or to create something that's for the good got to remember there's knowledge to destroy and knowledge to create that's how it goes but huh, life is life all right everybody i hope you have a good night i know i was kind of all over the place with that but I hope you got what I was talking about. I'll see you guys later.